Now to that chemical fire in southwest Louisiana after Hurricane Laura plowed through overnight. Officials warning nearby residents to close windows and shelter in place. There are no reports of any injuries, but sometimes these fires can lead to much worse. Beirut is still in recovery mode weeks after that massive chemical explosion left at least 180 people dead and thousands more injured. And as the Trump administration pushes to deregulate, some worry we could be setting ourselves up for a Beirut right here in America. Ginger Z explains. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. I don't know about you, but even weeks after the explosion in Lebanon, the video is still jaw-dropping. And in case you haven't heard, that blast in Beirut was an accident. An accidental ignition of 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate, the chemical that's used in fertilizer, mining, and bomb making. Now, very few people in Lebanon even knew that it was there, at the port, right next to 360,000 people that live in that city. A lot of you might feel like when you see something like that, it seems so far from home, so impossible, like that's never gonna happen here. Well, unfortunately, that's not true. We had our own devastating blast in 1947, Texas City, Texas. Here comes another explosion. Folks are running in the street. It still stands as one of the deadliest industrial accidents in our nation's history and one of the largest non-nuclear blasts in world history. Two explosions only seconds apart go off with the force of the Nagasaki atomic bomb. 2,500 tons of, yes, ammonium nitrate ignited when a ship docked in the port, killing almost 600 people, injuring thousands of others. Ammonium nitrate is also the same chemical that killed 14 people and injured more than 100 others in 20. 13 in that major explosion in West Texas. Yeah. Oh, you okay? You okay? Yeah, I can't hear. Come here. I can't hear. And there are homes level, there are businesses level, there is massive devastation. That time, the Chemical Safety Board investigators found that 40 tons of ammonium nitrate had been improperly stored in plywood bins. The ATF said that it was intentionally set on fire. Seven years now, and officials still have not caught whoever is responsible. After that incident, the Chemical Safety Board found that there were insufficient federal and state laws to keep any of us at a safe distance from the storage of ammonium nitrate. After West Texas, you identified 1,351 facilities with ammonium nitrate. Where are they? <laughs> Tell me. So I don't know where the 1,351 are. I can tell you that from that report, we do have a, a map which localizes where most of those facilities are. You heard that right. The Chemical Safety Board can't tell us exactly where they are, and that's not because the government isn't paying attention. There's a long list of agencies, including the Department of Homeland Security, that regulate the storage of dangerous materials, like ammonium nitrate. What they're trying to do is prevent those materials from being used by terrorists and protect us from people who might target the facilities. At the time of the 2013 report, there were 19 other Texas facilities storing more than 10,000 pounds located within a half a mile of school, a hospital, or nursing home. We just can't know which schools, which hospitals, or which nursing homes. Our country, since 2002, has imported the third most ammonium nitrate of any nation. But because it can be used to make explosives, the government is pretty protective about where it's coming into the country and where it's stored. And we produce a lot of ammonium nitrate too, consistently in the top five worldwide. In 2017, the U.S. made more than 1.3 million tons and imported 278,000 tons. We have almost 12,000 registered hazardous material facilities, according to the EPA. Now, 82 of those facilities put a million or more people at risk in worst case scenarios. After the West Texas fertilizer incident, the Obama administration tried to put more regulations in place. That would require facilities to do more to prepare for the worst case scenario. 
but those still didn't disclose ammonium nitrate facilities. So the Trump administration, on top of all this, has delayed the deadlines and changed requirements for those added regulations anyway, citing security risks and concerns that the regulations could make more information too public. This map highlights the states where the highest concentrations of ammonium nitrate are stored. So you can see it there, Missouri, Tennessee, a lot of the southeast, and definitely Texas. Texas is the state with the most investigations done by the CSB, and it has a long history with chemical accidents. I already told you about Texas City and that disaster, but then there was the 1995 warehouse fire in Houston's Pleasantville neighborhood. That thing burned for weeks. They couldn't put it out. And in 2018, when Hurricane Harvey dropped feet of rain, a chemical fire started at the Arkema facility. First responders got sick and sued, alleging that Arkema didn't properly prepare or respond to the storm. The lawsuit is still ongoing. And just last year, when the ITC fire broke out in Houston, smoke filled the sky, and part of the city had to shut down. Now, Chief Royal, who works for Harris County, says that after that accident, they're taking action. We learned a lot. One of the things that we're doing, very proud of uh, what we believe to be the first ever um, hazmat pre-plan initiative. Their new program started March 1st and had to pause because of COVID. It's going to take years to get to more than 1,800 facilities in Harris County, but they are dedicated to doing it. There's also one big reason that Chief Royal says Beirut won't likely happen there. Ammonium nitrate is not allowed into the Port of Houston complex. Uh, it's not allowed to be offloaded and stored in a warehouse or storage facility near the Port of Houston. Chief Royal also explained to me that Houston is like the donut hole of Harris County. So it's 95 chemical facilities run by different rules. The Houston Fire Department told us that the city requires those facilities with large amounts of hazardous materials to submit plans and be inspected for potential fire risks. And they don't allow them to be built near sensitive areas like hospitals or schools. So where do we find out how and where the dangerous chemicals are stored? And how do you know if they're near you? Well, you can start with the EPA's offerings. You fill out the Vulnerable Zone Indicator System form. It sounds really long, but it's actually super easy to fill out. Then they're gonna send you an email back to tell you if you live within a risk area. If you get a report back that seems alarming, you can then go one step farther. You can make an appointment with your local EPA's reading room. That's what it's called. You go to this website, and you find where your reading room is based on your state. They can then, when you make your visit, show you how much of an impact a chemical accident might have in a worst case scenario. They have computer modeling and they can show you all of this, but you can't keep it on a hard copy. It is sensitive information, so you just get it right there in the room. It's still, though, after all of this, is not going to tell you about ammonium nitrate facilities. That information is still handled by state and local emergency planning committees or your local fire department. So if there is a lot of ammonium nitrate being stored near you, like in Beirut, you just can't find out. But since that terrible accident, the calls for change and increased regulations are growing. Although I know we're dealing with very different quantities from Beirut, Beirut to West Texas, the videos are almost the same. We want to make sure that people are aware of what's in their community. So we're all in it together. So as residents or citizens, do your part, get involved, learn what's around you, learn how to access that information. I'm Ginger Z, and I promise it's not too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.